What's up, YouTube? Mr. Lamassi here, and today we're going to be talking about general changes that I think would be great in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Uh, this is kind of coming off 2.4, some of the stuff that we've seen, some of the changes that they have made, and I've addressed some of these before in the general section of it all, but there is definitely um, one, I want to reiterate some, and two, there's a couple other things that I've thought of with 2.4 and kind of how they've changed stuff. Uh, that I think would be helpful. So let's jump on in. The first one is base weapon damage. Now, there was a boost uh, for all of the revamped Nightmare and Hell mobs in 1.1, I believe. I almost want to like look it up. Diablo 2 1.10. I believe that's what it was. Um, where they increase the difficulty and they added a lot of stuff and whatever stuff. Um, and so monsters, yeah, monsters gained a ton of health. And this is also where we kind of came across the fire enchant bug and nightmare and all of this stuff. Um, right. There's a lot of like things that came about because of it that still need to be fixed. And I've mentioned that before as well. I won't talk about that for this piece, but the one thing is all of those mobs gained all of that health. But bases of weapons did not gain damage to compensate. So your exceptional and your elite swords and bows and crossbows and axes and all of these weapons did not gain the additional damage to compensate for that. And because of it, all of the melee and all of the physical damage uh, characters really dropped in power just a lot. Because those base, the base weapon damage still was just so low. And this is something, again, that we've seen with a lot of, like, physical bosons and things like that. And when you get to your, like, wind force and stuff, you're fine. But whenever you are going back to a lot of those bows and those early things, it's like, like I said in the Amazon video, it'll be like 8 to 30 damage required level 52. And you're like... At level 52, if I'm doing 8 to 30 damage, I don't hurt anything. There's no physical damage whatsoever coming from that bow. And this is because before in the past, it actually did some damage because the mobs had a lot less HP. And if you go back and play some of those old versions of the game, like when I was playing 1.0 and stuff, there was a lot less uh, just health on all of the mobs whatsoever. So... By increasing all of these base weapons, this will be a massive boost to your your physical builds, right? All of those physical builds, from the paladin to the barbarian to the you know druid to the Amazon, whatever it is. But any of the physical build pieces will suddenly gain a lot more of that damage and be able to actually kind of play their way through the game a lot better instead of sitting there saying... All of the stuff that I'm finding is just complete trash, and I can only use a couple of these rune words that have, you know, this big ED or this added damage onto them or whatever it is. Um, and that's the only way that I can, like, make this viable, right? Otherwise, I'm just completely screwed. So I think something like that being looked at could be very solid and uh, would help out just all physical characters a ton. The second thing is more character slots and i've brought this up before and i'm going to bring this up again and i'm going to keep bringing this up 20 characters is is just going to kill me i already have 20 characters on my main account filled out with like all level 75s and above i think there's like three mules maybe four mules on my main account Everything else is characters that I'm playing. I've got my Poison Necro. I've got my Blizzard Source. I've got my Hammered in. I've got my Smiter. I've got, right? I have all these different characters. And if they're wanting to continue increasing the amount of builds that are viable and more builds for me to play and have fun with, and at the same time, also have ladder and non-ladder and hardcore ladder and non-hardcore ladder and whatever else there all is going to be for all of these characters and my mules and all of this. How can I do this with 20 character slots? I just don't know. 
I mean, I I had probably 15 accounts at, at going at once in my old in the Diablo 2 Legacy, you know? Because you just have eight characters per account, and you just have that, and you have 100 characters across it all, and it's great. You've got, you know, 30, 40 mules and whatever stuff, but then you also have all the different characters you're playing, and you're making these silly characters and all of this. And now it's like, do I have to go delete my other characters? How am I going to keep all the gear and all the stuff that I have and all of that? It has so many questions. Um, I We need more character slots. This is just something that I, I just pray comes out. Otherwise, I don't know. I guess I'll just have to keep buying more accounts or something, which maybe that's what they want. But to me, that's really annoying. Uh, I just want to buy the game once and just be able to have more than 20 characters. So please, please increase the character slots like we could in Diablo 2 where we could just create more whenever we need it that was really nice um the third one is i really hope that they do add a currency tab uh i think that this would be a big help and helpful to the just stash tabs debate piece overall right because currently it's like okay you give us more stash tabs we fill more stash tabs and then that's it now it's like we're out of space again because it just is two additional tabs and it's great because i can share gear around back and forth between my stuff but i still kind of run in the same issue it's just i have a little bit more space but now it's all filled up and i'm still getting more runes i'm still getting more gems i'm still getting more keys and these sorts of things really are the stuff that's taking up a lot of the room and at the same time i can also take the gear i have in my shared tabs and trade it into more runes and trade it into currency but if the currency is just going to fill up more room, eventually I'm just going to run out of space again. So if I could just have a currency tab where I could just stack the runes and gems and keys and scrolls and all of that stuff there, it would just be amazing. I think that would be an insane quality of life piece. We saw in the survey like 95% of people wanted it at least, something like that. Uh, and and I, again, I think for... Instead of having to give us all 10 tabs or infinite tabs or all of that stuff, I think if you gave a currency tab, everybody would be like, all right, we're good. I'm sure some people are like, I'd still like more tabs. And yeah, it'd be nice to have a couple more or whatever. But like, I can have the mules. I'm okay with it. But just just having a currency tab, a place where I can always go get that. And especially because with trading, currency is such an important piece of all of the trading that... Being able to have that always available to all of your characters from the currency tab, you can get it, you can go, you can trade, put the stuff in your shared, move that to mules, whatever it is. Um, I think it's just going to be, would just be absolutely amazing. So for me, that's probably my biggest quality of life ask. Um, just being able to have that instead of having to just store all of the high runes and all the keys and all that just on mules that I have to constantly go and fetch and bring back. And it's in normal. Can you make the game in normal? And yada 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 all of that so that is probably one of my biggest asks um another thing i would really like is increased density in area level 85 areas and this isn't for like the pit or the tunnels or the world stone or any of those i think all of those are great but they added these new ones and it's cool you know we now have the red portals in act five and things like this but they suck. There's no monsters in them. They're, they're just completely empty. And so it's like, it's great that it's an area level 85, but I'm still never going to go farm it because there's just, uh, you know, uh, not anything. And let me see. Uh, I want to see if I can find. I should have looked this up prior. Um <laughs> Because there is a list. Oh, here we go. Level 85 areas, and these are just the current ones, but it shows you the min and max number of unique boss groups that you're going to have. So, of course, you can see something like the pit is amazing. Ancient tunnels is amazing. River of Flame, Chaos Sanctuary, Worldstone Keep, all of these are amazing. But who's going to go into the Forgotten Temple or Ruin Fane? Or, I mean, these are, of course, going to be two because they're just going to be, you know, whatever. 
But, you know, okay, the Maggot Lair, it's like got some, and that's not bad, but it's also the Maggot Lair. Mausoleum's kind of a classic, like, it just has less, <laughs> uh, you know, mobs in there and whatever. And so I love, like, going around in these areas and these ones and whatever. Um, but I'm wondering if there is the... No, it needs to log in or whatever. I want to see the, the new area level 85s because a lot of them, I just know. I've just been in those, like, red portals before. And there's just nothing. And it's not even just um, unique packs, but it's also just packs of any kind whatsoever, right? Just like monsters in general. So let's go here. And uh, I just want to go to, like, one of the portals right now. Yeah, it feels like they're like one to two unique bosses. Let's go find a portal real fast. There we go. Abaddon. And it's like already no mobs. Okay, we have a little, little group of a couple archers and stranglers. No uniques. We have one boss pack right there. Impossible. Couple more monsters. Couple more. Still no. no another boss pack. Nope, no boss pack. No boss pack. No boss pack. We have a chest. And okay, a little bit more archer pack right there. And that's about it. And we're dead. Uh, but it's like, who's gonna... That was one boss pack and a chest. Who is gonna go into an area for one boss pack and a chest and just a scattering of a couple monsters? Nobody. Nobody's gonna go into those, right? They just, like, it doesn't make sense. So, density in there, unique mobs in all of those areas really just need to be boosted up. Um to make them actually viable, to make them places that I'm actually gonna care to go to and uh, and just get, just, just farm. Otherwise, like I say, I'm not going to the Abaddon ever. It's just, it's just never gonna be a place that I'll enter. And that makes me sad because I want to go there. I think the, those areas are really cool that they have those portals and it's fun and you get those side areas and you never really had the incentive before to go. And now they're area level 85, so it's like, ooh, that's exciting. But there was one boss pack in there, and that's never going to draw any serious magic finder whatsoever. So, uh, that is that piece. Now, the next thing that I would like for them to add is loot filters and loot notifiers. Wow, wait, Mr. Lima, I thought you said that loot filters are the devil and you hate them and the game would be ruined if they had them because I read that on a forum one place of somebody who spread a rumor and was talking about how you think they're awful. And you're the worst person in the world. Well, I personally don't care too much for it. Because, again, I'm when I play the game, I have the alt key down pretty much all the time. And as I kill mobs, I see the stuff that drops from those mobs. And so I'm not looking at a whole screen of text after everything is already dead looking for whatever item. I'm killing that boss, seeing what it drops, killing that boss, seeing what it drops, and moving around. And to me, it doesn't have as much of an effect. That being said, a lot of people seem very interested in a loot filter. I've always said I want a loot notifier, which just tells you in the top corner, like, hey, a Jarun dropped off screen. So you know that you can go back and get it because off screen is stuff that you can't always see. And with a lot of skills like Blizzard or Poison or anything like that, it dies, you know, as you've already kind of moved on. So you don't always see it. Um, but lots of people seem to want a loot filter. So I say, screw it. Let's ask them for a loot filter. I mean, I can build a pretty awesome loot filter, I feel like. I have a pretty good idea of all the different items in the game that would be good to pick up, the ones that are going to be worthless, that you shouldn't care about, all the stuff that you're going to want or not want, and obviously having help for things like potions, so you're only seeing like super healings and super manas or whatever things like that could be really nice. 
Um, there's plenty of stuff that is nice with loot filters. I've used them in some of the mods before, and they were decent. And I might use it. I might not use it. I'm not really sure. Um, I think it would also be helpful on console. That is very true. Because console, you have to, like, weed through a little bit of stuff more often. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think... I've never said loot filters are the devil and they would ruin the game in any capacity. I've just said, personally, I think I can still get by and play this game just fine. And I don't think I've ever missed anything that was important because I didn't have a loot filter on. But I use a lot of the audio cues. I use a lot of the visual cues of when things drop. And the way that I just play the game and play through the game, I feel like is uh, less needing of it. But a lot of people don't play this game as often, don't have as much experience, don't have all of those cues to look at and think of and know that stuff. Um, and so, yeah, let's ask him for loot filters. I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing. And uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is Merce Adjustments. I think uh, there's still some more to be done. I like the Act 1 mercenaries. I like Mist giving them that pierce. Um, I think that is still very cool. Act 2 is still king. Uh, this, is, this is very true. Act 2 is definitely still king. Um, so I don't mind the Act 1 mercenaries. I think there's still some use for them. And they can still be interesting and will have some spot. Act 3 Mercenaries, I feel like there is... This is the one that I think needs the most help. One, because Mercenaries very much rely on having lifesteal so that they can uh, stay alive, right? Like, that's a huge thing for an Act 2 Mercenary is you have to have lifesteal on some sort of thing. Otherwise, he's just going to die immediately. So the Act 3 Mercenary is great because he's going to cast the Static or he's going to cast Enchant or all, all the whatever stuff. But he's never going to sustain himself and he's always just going to die super fast because he's trying to just cast, um, you know, some sort of spell and that's it. And so I think, one, you need to either like jack the life up even more on them a ton, but also there needs to be some sort of replenish life. Or there needs to be some sort of like redemption aura that comes on him or something. He needs some help for sustainability because without any of that sustainability, he's just going to die all the time. <laughs> and that's just going to be it. He's just always going to be dying uh, and never really going to be worth it whatsoever. I think you can also give him even more crowd control. Give him... Um, you know, Frost Nova, things like that to kind of allow him to just kind of freeze everything around and give him a little bit more uh, of that. And yeah, you could give him Phoenix Shield, but that's extremely expensive. Um, so it's a, why, why are we giving him, uh, you know, like, I don't want to invest that much in there just to kind of give him a little something, right? That feels like he should just naturally have more uh, on his own anyways to kind of save himself. Um, and maybe there's even the idea of him being a healer in some way, right? Um, now we're talking expensive. I mean, it's if, if there was a best-in-slot reason for him to exist and have that phoenix, I think there could be something, um, you know. But I think even with the phoenix, he still kind of would suck, right? So it's like, he's a healer, maybe let him heal. Right? I mean, he's a caster. Maybe give him some healing capabilities for himself, for you, for whatever stuff. Um, so I think I think he is really the one that I focus in on because I see uses for the Act 1 mercenaries. I see uses for the Act 5 mercenaries. I like the idea of having the battle cry there um, and, you know, kind of doing a little bit. But it just it just feels like overall... The Act Three is just uh, is just a little little pathetic, and the AI I think also plays a part in it. I think really making them maybe a little more diligent, casting a little bit more, being a little more active, especially for the casters, maybe trying to really like avoid monsters themselves, like moving away and doing a little 
sidestep or whatever stuff. Maybe that AI is too sophisticated for this game. Um, but yeah, it ju- it just feels like uh, the mercenary himself could could have a little bit more there. And like I say, the Act 3 mercenary, some way to heal, some way to sustain or leech or have redemption or whatever would uh, would really just help out there overall. So yeah, I don't know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. What do you think would uh, be helpful? A lot of people are saying, you know, more auras on more mercenaries. I think that's also something you could do. Um, but even still, you know, like an Act 3 mercenary is always going to suck if he's has no sustain, has no abilities whatsoever there. So, you know, I like the idea of boosting them in other ways, but they got to they got to have some other ways to really, you know, kind of help themselves out. Anyways, post your comments down below. I do appreciate you guys watching and listening. Uh hope that you have a good one. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time. Peace YouTube.